Good evening everyone, it's Eric with His and Hers HHQ. Uh, before us we have the 1959 Ford Galaxy hardtop convertible. Um, as you can see it's molded in coral. Um, well I don't know if you can tell, it's a coral color. Now I did take some time and uh, I already washed uh, all the pieces even though it's kind of hard to tell um, using the warm water and my uh, detergent of choice was Dawn dish soap um, but I did sort I did sort all this I and it well sort of sorted all of this uh, I know it's kind of hard to tell uh, I made a statement before that um, this was both a simple and complicated kit and as I actually sorted and went through all the parts and everything like that it really is um, in some respects there's not a whole lot of detail and in other respects there's too much detail so it, it's kind of this weird combination going on. Uh, mind you, it was Ravel, it was uh, the 1980s. And um, well, let's just say, I would love to see Ravel re-release this new tooled, pro uh, quite possibly a skill level five kit. Um, yeah, this, this is a really beautiful car and I think they could do some serious justice to this car. Um, that being said, I also, uh, did some research and I have decided on, um, a couple of colors. Now, if you look at the box art, it's red over black I there I've actually seen the pictures of the actual car it doesn't have neon flamingo on it but I have seen pictures of the actual car red over black however I found the paint codes for the 59 Ford Galaxy and Again, this is uh, an homage to my mother. Uh, it's a dedication build. And I, I want to say I really do remember that she was trying to go for the uh, red over black. But I know my mother, she would be like, well, honey, pick, you know, uh, do the color you want. So as I stated in the Facebook post, this kit will get completed and I you know it's just I'm pretty sure she, like I know she started it and I know she got to this point but I don't think she ever got an operating um, hood I, I don't I don't recall that uh, I would have to talk to my brothers and it, I don't know um, but anyway it's I got to looking at the color codes and I'm going to go it says colonial white as uh, the upper body but the best I, or closest I could find to the colonial white is uh, pearl white and I think I'm gonna go with the pearl white I do like that and the body itself is either going to be the sky blue or the Indian turquoise it depends upon what I can find um, and un unfortunately I think it's going to be the sky blue but that's because that's the actual color I did find so um, we'll we'll go from there it's one of those things I haven't ordered the paint yet but uh, I will hear uh, shortly now uh, again as I said I did sort the uh, the parts out a little bit 
as you can see uh, I have mr. and mrs. somebody here getting ready to uh, pop in their uh, classic Elvis and get to cruising from Chicago to LA uh, however and it's one of the biggest reasons why I've avoided figures is because if you look at this fit trying to get uh, her together or get him together it's just going to be a, a struggle in of itself these little pieces here represent kits unto themselves so even though I have tried to avoid doing figures most of my life um, I'm going to give it a try because it, if my mother were around today she would knock these guy uh, these two out of the park I mean, she just she was epic with that um, so I'm going to give it my best with that. I do have my uh, putty. I'm going to uh, order some lacquer thinner and uh, do a little bit of blending and see if I can't get that, uh, get those seams filled in, get uh, any gaps and everything cleaned up with those two. Um, so there's not a whole lot of detail unfortunately i really wanted to go all out bells and whistle bells and whistles with this but i mean the i can maybe get some uh get some wiring done i know getting the touch-ups on the engine is going to be uh one thing uh, I did see some color uh, color schemes for engines in the actual car and I'm kind of really digging that so I'm going to try and push for that um, also I mentioned something about how I thought the galaxy was to the fair lane what the Continental Lincoln Continental was to the Crown Victoria I was close but not quite there it turns out the Fairlane and the Galaxy are the same car I I hate to bring it up but it's more like a Chevy a Chevy Chevelle and a Chevy Malibu the Fairlane was the base model, just like the Chevelle was. The Galaxy was the bells and whistles. The whole, uh, it, it, it was the awesome part that, you know, it had all the uh, great features and the chrome and the uh, bells and whistles, basically what it is. So, much like the Malibu was the, um, <coughs> was the bells and whistles to the Chevelle, that's what we have here. And it turns out, if you look closely, right here, I, had, I don't know, let me see, zoom this in a little bit here, see if, how well you can see that. Fairlane 500 so as you can see it still says the Fairlane but it is the galaxy because it's got all the bells and whistles so we're looking at uh, the galaxy 500 is what it was uh, there's actually believe it or not a car club out in California that that's dedicated to the Fairlane slash galaxy and uh, or at least there was it's one of the color code sheets that I found and um, yeah, well, I, I didn't check the date on it but anyway that they had it listed this is what the cars were this was the color codes it was um, 
Well, it was red over black, it was white over black, it was black on black, it was red on red, um, it was uh, sky blue over royal blue, that kind of thing. So that's the uh, that that's where I went with it, and I I really uh, uh, dug into it and saw um, quite a few pictures of the actual vehicles. So I'm absolutely um, I I think we can pull this off. Uh, again, there's not a whole lot of detail, but we can make do. So. Let's try and get some work done for you and uh, get this video rolling, get the build going. Let's start by moving some of this out of the way without hopefully losing things. Move our figures over there. Sort our, our engine there. Now, the way I'm going to try to do this is major sub-assemblies. Uh, and the unfortunate aspect of this is it called step one says put all this stuff together. Well, I don't want to put the dash in place yet. But I can get uh, um, the master brake cylinder and uh, heater in. So... Um, we might do that uh, as one sub-assembly. Radiator will always be separate. We can see about doing the uh, body itself, but look, the engine is all the way over here at number three. So that's one of those weird things. So again, it's major sub-assemblies. We're gonna get the body together, the engine together, and see about doing the frame assembly here and we'll go from there so some of the things i will do uh off camera that you won't get to see are uh all the cleanup and stuff like that i'll get things put together but i want to get rid of like you see that seam we don't want that seam on the finished product See how things don't quite line up. You can tell it's an older kit. Again, I it's I'm not going to pick on Ravel too bad, or I hope I don't. But it, you know, I would love to see Ravel actually come out. Or re-release this kit as a completely new tool and fix all of these little things I think I mean seriously I think we could you know do better with the engine do better with the interior maybe do a separate frame uh, I know there's a lot of builders out there that actually don't mind a one-piece uh, body pan and frame but you know it it might be a little fun to actually have a frame to work off of and then work the body tub and whatnot you know, that way there's just that little extra detail but that's just a personal thing I, I mean I know I'm sure there might be a few builders out there that are looking at this and listening to me and going what are you talking about working that uh, roof is hard enough well yeah I know but it I mean it still might be a little fun to have just that little bit of extra detail be able to play with it some Alright. 
Now I'm thinking when we do this, I'm going to leave those things separate. And there's a reason for that. The all the uh, interior engine shots I saw looked phenomenal. Wait a minute. And what it was is the body color or the valve covers in the air cleaner there were actually the body color whereas the engine was uh, black. So I thought that was pretty daggum cool so I think I'm going to try to recreate that. Again these are actual vehicles that uh, I saw so it's not like I'm making it up as I go along uh, I mean the, it may have just been a owner's choice to do something like that but you know I don't know that but it was like every single one of them I saw it that's what it was it you know so we'll we'll go from there and See what we can do, see what we can get, or look we can pull off. They called it uh, Y8 instead of a V8. Uh, I mean, it, I guess it looks more like a Y, but I don't know. Okay, that's about as far as we'll go with that because I want to be able to clean up the uh, seams on the tranny and uh, around here, the <coughs> Uh, water pump or water housing area for the uh, fan belt and I do believe that would still be a generator and not an alternator so we want to leave that off for now but we're gonna leave those set aside and those but we're going to come over here and this again is some little details little things that we can do at, and create a major sub-assembly unfortunately those aren't the kind of side snips I need or would like to get I actually looked those up. Would you believe they're like $45 for a set of side snips? Like, good lord. I think I paid, well, as outrageous as it is, I think I paid like $12 for these. So, but these are pretty solid and they've lasted me for a couple of years. So, we're doing all right there. And yes, believe it or not, I'm wearing a, I'm not wearing safety glasses. I'm actually wearing a set of glasses of sorts. So I can try to protect my eyes while I'm snipping away at this stuff. This is just the basic process. You, again, you never you, you you don't have to do do things the way I do. I oddly enough, as a viewer of YouTube and watching um, some of my favorite content creators. I've actually seen a couple of them, the way they assemble things, and my head's exploded. 
So it, you know, it's a completely understandable thing. Everybody has their own way of doing something. And it just so happens that I have a way of doing things myself. Now, I know a lot of them may actually do uh, major sub assemblies and try to get those out of the way. Try to get seams or mold lines. If you look, uh, let me see, try this one more time. It's kind of hard to see, but there is a mold line right there. And it's one of those things we really want to um, try to keep cleaned up just because we want a certain kind of realism or authenticity to the build even if we are being limited by the amount of detail here now be careful when sanding around here because that's actually got a lip we want to uh, try and preserve that because that's where the inner wheel grabs a hold of it and even though I'm most likely or in the greatest likelihood I'm going to uh, glue the tires so they don't roll because again I really don't want this kit to roll off the shelf we want um, we still want to preserve that lip because it's going to be what holds the tire in place Now, you don't necessarily have to do this the way I'm doing it. It's basically just a light shave and it's now nice and flat. If you are not an adult, do please get an adult to help you when working with sharp objects. Now I've seen a couple of the model builders, the content creators talking about how if you know you ain't bleeding at some point in your life then you uh, you must be doing it wrong. Well I sort of agree with that but we want to keep everybody safe. So you don't have to do it this way matter of fact I know a lot of people would prefer you not to do it that way but it's the way I do it and I do it safely even though I have on occasion accidentally stuck myself or cut myself it happens that's why it's called an accident but we don't want we don't want that right you see here those are some nasty pin marks and you see how like the rise is different there like that's actually going to mess with my head and I say that just because it's like uh, I'm already sitting here getting frustrated but here we are we're going along and when we get this front end on we'll call it a, call it an evening 
It is, after all, right about one o'clock in the morning for me. So we're going to try and get back to this in the daylight hours. But I wanted to share this with you just so you can see where we're at and see what I was talking about how it's it's like an extra simple kit yet complicated like there's detail but there isn't All right, well, I think we're gonna call it a night. Um, <laughs> we've had one little incident after the other. Um, <coughs> uh, plus the this hay fever is getting to me. Um, I will do some more cleaning up on this and get this cleaned up. Uh, later on off camera and hopefully through the magic of editing you don't get to see the oopsies um, but uh, so yeah this is where we're at um, so basically the frame slash floor pan is uh, pretty good uh, pretty solid to go now And this is where we're at um, so we are started and um, we still have a long way to go I mean you can see all that flash it's just absolutely horrible so we still have a whole lot of cleanup to do and most of what you see over there in that little pile is a lot of the hinge work so yeah I'm looking forward to that not all right so we have a lot more to do and but we're cruising along I would say if we were on route 66 we are on the outskirts of Chicago now with this build so Let's uh, keep right on cruising along, enjoy the mother road, enjoy the wonderful late spring, early summer weather, and uh, let's keep cruising. I'm Eric with His and Hers HHQ. Be sure to follow us over on Facebook at His and Hers Hobby Headquarters. Uh, 
if you find the content uh, entertaining or um, you like it informative take a moment to like and subscribe uh, feel free to comment below I do what I can to comment as soon as I can um, but I do appreciate the feedback and uh, I appreciate the likes and the views so let's keep them coming and uh, keep the channel growing and get the word out on scale models let's get back into doing this I'm Eric have a good evening <laughs>